Hi, diagnostic hysteroscopy. How does that work in practice? I am Dr. Drizi and I'm pleased to share the basics with you in four steps, plus a bonus at the end. And for those to whom it matters, the same video exists in French. Now, the fact is that this video is mainly practical. It was conceived for the gynecologists, whether in training or not, who really want to perform diagnostic hysteroscopy, but who either don't know much about it, in fact there are a lot of countries where endoscopy remains way too underused, or they know but still cannot make it, they're scared, they don't feel like they can do it, you know, emotional unreadiness. If that's your case, this video is for you. Just go ahead and check it step by step. And think of pausing the video whenever necessary. That's the good part about recordings. You know, you can pause the video anytime you want and as long as you wish. And again, this is really practical. The point here is not to talk about theory. Actually, theory is everywhere else in books, and of course, everyone should read books anyway. But here, the point is to talk about practice, those things and tips that cannot be detailed in books. Let's just think of it as a practical session. Uh, meanwhile, I think it's indisputable that everyone should increase their theoretical knowledge. Because truth is, we don't want to pretend that this work replaces the academic teaching of hysteroscopy, especially that I'm no expert in this matter. I'm rather at my very first steps, and that's precisely why I love doing this work now, because now I'm still aware of the real difficulties that we all encounter as beginners, and of course the way of overcoming them. Therefore, I want you to know that this is a personal initiative, the sum of modest efforts which took me almost four years to completely mature. It's also a volunteer work. I wasn't paid to do it, so it's worth what it's worth, and I do it for free. Nobody has to pay to have it. So if you ever had to give money to have this, I'm sorry, but you've just been scammed. Let's get into details now. Hysteroscopy is largely developing nowadays. Abnormal uterine bleeding, peri- and postmenopausal bleeding, infertility, recurrent pregnancy loss, etc. Hysteroscopy is the key because it allows us view with our own eyes the inside of the uterus to diagnose intrauterine problems to perform biopsies under visual control, it's capital. In diagnostic hysteroscopy, here is how we define it and the stuff we say about it in all the books. The general principle appears very simple. Yet, what about practice? Why don't we feel, for most of us, like capable of performing it? And why, despite taking part of workshops and training sessions, a lot of physicians still feel like they're scared to go for it on their own. Why do we feel like we need someone with us? Why can't we make it through? Because to make it through, we first have to overcome the real difficulties that a beginner encounters. Yet, these limits seem to be organized around four levels of difficulties, or blocks, and to each of us the level what it blocks. First and most important difficulty is, stay tuned, psychological, <laughs> yeah, mental blocks, limiting thoughts. In our minds, it's complicated. That's just complicated, it's not obvious. And so we feel like we can never do it for real. Our second level of difficulties is our total or partial ignorance of the equipment. Actually, as gynecologists, we all know the uterus by heart, yet not the equipment we use to examine the uterus. One must admit that for a very long time, 
The equipment was unavailable in many countries, like Algeria, for example. We could barely see it on pictures. So, force of habit, we remain intimidated by the details of the equipment, by the way of handling it. The technique, it looks way too complicated, especially for someone who lives in a zone where people are not that much used to endoscopy. Third fact, the technique. Well, the truth is, we hardly know the equipment. So when it comes to using it, it's a whole other problem. Welcome to anxiety. What if we couldn't insert it? What if we caused harm? What if we caused uterine perforation? And once inside the uterus, could we really interpret what we see? What's normal, what's not? What if we missed a cancer, for example? And the worst part is that all these difficulties feed into one another. The more we're mentally blocked, the more we find all the rest complicated, and vice versa. Because the more troubles we have with the equipment and the technique, the more we're scared and overwhelmed with limiting thoughts. Just like a snake eating its own tail, we lock ourselves in a vicious circle and no longer know how to get out of it. So what do we do? We do a lot of training. We attend a lot of sessions, here or elsewhere. We are convinced that this is the only way to work it out. Yet, instead of feeling better about it, we have the surprise to discover that, despite it all, we're still scared of performing hysteroscopy by ourselves. I don't feel like I can do it yet, says who? Well, why? Because with these training sessions, we work on our theoretical knowledge, but not necessarily on our mental blocks. So, how can we work it out? That's kind of the point, after all. Truth is, to each type of difficulty, a level of solutions, in four steps, like four levels of difficulties. To psychological issues, a psychological step, very important or just vital. To the equipment issues, developing familiarity with the tools we use. To the technical difficulties, familiarization with the directions and precautions for use. And to the anxiety of missing the diagnosis of cancer or other lesions during the procedure, having knowledge and memorizing the hysteroscopic images. So it's four steps, psychological, the equipment, the technique, and the atlas of reference images. The point is to do more than dream of diagnostic hysteroscopy, which means performing it for real. So let's begin with the most important part of all, the psychological step. A step for growing awareness. Actually, we have to be aware of our context. We live in a country where for too long, really for too long, hysteroscopy was unavailable and therefore inaccessible. Only an active minority could perform it, which left the majority with a growing feeling of incapacity. Because truth is, not having the right to do something puts it consciously or unconsciously, in a particular frame, the one of it's complicated, it's not obvious at all. Because consciously or unconsciously, it is thought that what everyone does not know how to do is necessarily difficult. Otherwise, everybody would do it. Yet, that's not the case of diagnostic hysteroscopy. It really goes the other way around. Now, go and tell that to a community who has lived all these years in the inaccessibility of this procedure. In their minds, it's complicated, it's not easy. And when we watch experts do their thing, we, we feel like we're ages away. Somehow like a beginning driver next to Schumacher. Which brings us back to the first part of all, the psychological work 
that is necessary. We must grow awareness of the fact that diagnostic hysteroscopy is not complicated at all. It's just our environment, our background, that makes us believe so, as just explained. Once we get conscious of that, we'll have a different look on the equipment and the technique. Everything becomes clearer, easier, in its right and true proportion. So first and most important step to take is getting rid of our mental blocks. And for that, let's just raise our consciousness and awareness of three simple facts with three simpler examples. Um, first fact is that no, diagnostic hysteroscopy is not complicated. It's even much simpler than a DNC or dilation and curatage, a procedure that even a first-year resident performs in Algeria, for example, and that all the gynecologists around the world can perform as well without any particular anxiety. Do you just realize it? Here in the lab, just take a look at all what a first-year gynecology resident can perform. Endometrial smear or biopsy, IUD insertion, CND, inserting various curettes in big uruses, softened by pregnancy, even molar ones. And he's very happy. <laughs> I don't know, it's like uh, blindly and happily. It could be a slogan. Yet, in the right, you have a licensed gynecologist who obviously can perform all of the procedures a first year can do. And when performing these blind procedures, no one is particularly scared of uterine perforation, for example. Although all these procedures are done blindly, so reasonably, it's here that we're supposed to have a bigger anxiety because we perform all these intrauterine procedures blindly. We don't see anything. But when it comes to doing it with a camera in your hand, everybody is freaking out. We're scared of causing perforation or other complications. Now that we see everything thanks to the camera we hold in our hands. Is that even rational? Is that logical? Do you just realize it? Which brings us back to the fact that fear is really psychological. Meanwhile, I don't mean that everyone should go for it without thinking or considering the risks. I think that everyone knows that any procedure in medicine should be taken seriously. We don't want to make it look inconsiderate. That would be stupid, but we don't want to make it look complicated neither. Just bring it back to its true proportion by dragging your attention to all the intrauterine procedures that you usually perform without any particular anxiety, even if they're blindly done. Plus, if you're a gynecologist, you do know that there are risks in every procedure in medicine, including hysteroscopy. But thinking of hysteroscopy as being more complicated than a blindly performed DNC, for example, I don't know, I just doubt it. And just for your information, diagnostic and office hysteroscopy are nowadays considered routine procedures. All right, moving on to fact number two. If you really want to drive a car, you have to be alone behind the wheel. And so does it go for diagnostic hysteroscopy. Because if you want to stop being a beginner driver, well, you have to take the wheel alone. That's the way it works, you know. And guess why? Because if every time you want to drive, you take a coach with you, you'll never drive. And everybody knows that. Because your coach will always tell you what to do and what not to do. Therefore, you'll never know how you would have handled the situation if you were on your own. So, you'll feel less secure about yourself, less and less confident, even if you're increasing your knowledge. But you're breaking your confidence. And this, whether the coach is a mean guy like this one, or sweet as a doll as this one, the fact is that the beginner driver knows, deep down, that it's the coach who's driving, not him. So, the fact is, to learn driving, there is an indisputable moment 
where you have to go for it alone. And that day, you'll feel exactly like a beginner. Not quite comfortable, tensed, hesitating, focusing on a million details all at once. You'll feel the need of doing it slowly and carefully. And that's precisely why beginner drivers never have fatal accidents because they're particularly slow and careful, which is a great thing in hysteroscopy. And that day, all that you learned in theory will come up to the surface when facing real situations, and only then you will understand its real meaning. This is the way we learn driving. It doesn't go the other way around. And the good news is that the more time passes, the more comfortable and confident we get. Even Schumacher had to go through the beginner driver's step one day. It's true that I can hardly imagine him, but that's just the way things work, even for Schumacher himself. Like in swimming, you can watch the whole planet swim. If you don't do what it takes to get in the water yourself, you'll never swim. So why on earth do you want it to be different in diagnostic hysteroscopy? That's the learning curve, actually, just the way it works. And the last thing is, to take the wheel alone, we have to understand the phenomenon of the little girl playing with the dough. There, mommy is preparing a cake. Her little girl is excitedly watching her. She wants to do the same, and she asks for it. Ma, ma, can I do it too? Oh, I just loved imitating the little girl. So, with a big smile, the mother gives her daughter a little piece of dough. And the child works it and makes different forms with it. She's very excited. For the first time, she's touching the dough. Her mummy might also get it cooked for her in the oven. So, the little girl has the feeling of someone who's just baked a cake. Although, she's just played with the dough. Because the cake, it's Ma who did it. And if little girl wants to eat a new one tomorrow, she perfectly knows that she'll have to ask for it from Ma. And in diagnostic hysteroscopy, it goes the same way around. Actually, when we take part of workshops, we often have the happy feeling of the one who's just performed hysteroscopy for the first time. Meanwhile, we just played with a toe, or surgical tools in this case. If we truly want to perform hysteroscopy, we have to do exactly like the mummy when it comes to baking a cake, which means knowing the ingredients and the way of combining them all together comes to knowing the hysteroscopy equipment by heart and the way of assembling it. That's what step two is gonna be about. Two. Knowing how to shape the dough comes to knowing how to handle the hysteroscope and deal with the technical aspects. And that's what step three is going to be about. And three, knowing the final results so as to remove the cake from the oven comes to knowing the different reference images of the uterine cavity, which will indicate the end of the procedure and the removal of the hysteroscope. And that's gonna be talked about in step number four. As you see, there's no place for improvisation. We have to know all these things. So there we go. Increasing awareness of our mental blocks, the main obstacle that we not in practice. After that, we take the wheel alone. And for that, steps two, three, and four will help us learn how to quit playing with the dough to finally be able to prepare the cake by ourselves. So first think the ingredients or the equipment, whatever.